Hi, I'm Denise Thomas, and I teach language arts and social studies here at IMS for sixth graders. I'm lucky enough to have your child twice in one day, so I have all of the students in language arts and in social studies. Great for me because I see them twice a day, but also great for you. I've condensed one, um, both subject matters into one video, so you only have to watch one tonight. A little about a bit about me. I am a Husky. I went to the University of Washington and directly after that, I went straight to graduate school to get my master's in teaching at Whitworth College and then took my first teaching job at Santa Clara Unified School District as an elementary teacher. When I returned to Washington, I luckily landed on Mercer Island and taught elementary school, mostly fifth grade at West Mercer. And then in 2018, I returned to Islander Middle School um, and have been here ever since and couldn't be happier. It's an amazing place to teach and to learn. You'll see that I have a very large gap between 2006 and 2018. At that point in my life, I was on the other side of the academic world as a parent. So I can say that I understand the challenges and the things that parents and um, families face when it comes to uh, school age children. So I feel like that gives me a lot of insight and I 100% keep that in mind when I am interacting with kids and also creating lessons um, and, and activities for the kids to work on, knowing very well that what the other side feels like as well. These are my kids. I have a senior, Will, and a freshman, Henry. And that is actually my ASB card from my sixth grade year. And we all somehow survived sixth grade. Uh, some of us um, had a little bit smoother of a ride than others, um, but somehow we all made it through. And I will say that um, with pride, I survived being a sixth grade parent twice, um, and it was not easy at all. They are, uh, middle school kids are amazing, mysterious, wonderful creatures who you have to really spend time getting to know in a different way because they become different people in the three years they're here at um, Islander. And if I somehow survived those two boys going through sixth grade, I know you can too. One of the things that really guides my lesson planning, my teaching, and my interaction with kids is that I believe that no significant learning can occur without a significant relationship. And I spend the greater part of the beginning of the year really trying to learn not only academically what your child's strengths are and interests, but just them as people. Because I feel once they know that I'm interested in them as a human being, um, that they'll begin to trust me, that they know that I care about them. And then from there, um, the sky's the limit when it comes to learning in school. Uh, this leads to the beliefs that I have as an educator, and that's that education should reveal and celebrate a child's gifts. And those gifts aren't always academic. And so my job is to help a child understand that their gifts may or may not be revealed through traditional ways at school, through writing or math, um, but that they should be celebrated. And so I hopefully will incorporate ways that they can involve and incorporate their own um, gifts and their true gifts uh, that they have to offer in different assignments or projects, whether that be you're a downhill ski racer or you're an amazing um, baker, whatever it might be, to be able to find ways to celebrate that. That we all have a story to tell and that our voice matters, whether we're 11 or 12, it doesn't matter. Um, and that our learning community honors diversity through understanding, empathy, and respect. That we take time to understand different experiences and perspectives. And from that, we build empathy, which which leads to respect, which then makes it an amazing place to spend your day. And it makes you um, appreciate and know that you have a place in that community. We spent a lot of time at the beginning of this year um, figuring out what we as a learning community, so that's teachers and kids in my class, uh, what our values and beliefs are. 
So the kids all brainstormed ideas. I collected them. The students voted on their top three. And these are what they came up with um, for each class period. So you, your child either has me first and fourth period or second and fifth period. So you'll have to remember which one, which time they have me. Um, but depend, no matter when they have me, the things that they came up with are amazing. And to look at them and know what they've decided on and agreed upon makes me really excited about the, the year to come. It's gonna be a great place to learn and to teach. You can actually find those um, values and beliefs at our classroom website, which is actually a Google site that I've created. I'll send the link home after you've been able to have time to watch the videos, but this is going to be a place where I update things that are happening in language arts and social studies, and you can see at the top um, that you can just navigate by the period your child has me, and we'll continually update that. My goal is for the students to soon take over the updates, <clears throat> so that'll be child children's voices, kids' voices. Um, there in the writing, and I will um, can make sure to update that continuously so it's a great place for you to always reference to see what's happening in room 203. We're working hard to build skills that are going to make a great foundation for them in middle school and beyond. So when I really sat down and thought about it, Technology, self-advocacy, engagement, and organization. If they can get those four things down, um, they are going to be successful here at IMS, at middle, at Mercer Island High School, and beyond. Now, some of us are great at one thing, and we're, we're, we're challenged in another. All of us are as humans. And so I thought it'd be a great way to, you know, have kids work towards getting better by incentivizing them. We all work great for incentives. So I gave them a punch card this week where I'm going to look for them showing me those skills. And when I catch them doing good, I'm going to give them a punch. When they collect 10 punches, they can um, trade that in for a price. So if you have little prizes hanging around, or if you know of something that you think sixth graders would go crazy about, and you're willing to donate those to, you, to our class, I will take any and all prizes that you um, have that you think that they might like. <clears throat> I am part of a team here at um, IMS that is working toward moving my grading um, philosophies toward grading for equity. And basically you're gonna, you're gonna hear a lot more about that from, um, from us throughout the year. But this really boils down to that the grades that will be reported in Skyward, um, which is our reporting tool, is only going to reflect a child's progress toward a skill and a set of standards. It's not going to include behaviors. It's not gonna include compliance. And those things are like, homework completion, tardy, participation, um, effort, extra credit, those things are not going to be taken into consideration. Their work performance and their work that they provide me is going to be what I'm looking for in regards to an essential standard. And then from there, learning to grow. Um, and if you have more questions about this, I completely understand. And you'll hear more about this as the year goes on. Um, and if you have specific questions, you could always reach out to me. I'm sorry for the leg time. I don't know what's going on, but I've recorded this three times, so I'm not going to start over. I don't know what's happening to my screen as it pixelates and grows. I'm going to go back one. Here we go. Um, so in language arts, obviously, we're going to do some reading. We're starting with short stories. We read the novel, The Giver. We read the graphic novel, March Volume 1 by John Lewis, and we read the memoir, Red Scarf Girl by Zhili Zhang. We also uh, really want the kids just reading on their own. And so we spent a ton of time building that, going to the library, using my classroom library, using Libby, which is a way to check out eBooks um, so that they have access to books of their choosing. And their job between now and the end of the trimester is to read as many different kinds of genres that they can. So it doesn't matter what 
the amount of books they read, but that they're varying the types of books that they read. And they have a independent reading log that they're going to keep track of their finished books. And it has a great description at the top. So if you want more information, you could ask them to show you their independent reading log. And that will help you understand a little bit more what we're looking for. We're also going to do writing and language arts. We're gonna start with a short story, a narrative writing unit. We will introduce them to their first literary analysis. We will write an informative essay and work on um, conducting great research. They'll write an argumentative piece and we will hopefully weave in poetry as we go throughout the, um, throughout the year. In social studies, we are lucky enough to study ancient civilizations which is awesome and amazing. We've launched this week into learning about early humans. We then learn about Mesopotamia and then Egypt, India, China, world religions, Greece, and if we have time, Rome. Um, but these are always super interesting civilizations to learn more about. And uh, the kids always wanna learn more than we have time for. So hopefully your kids are excited about this type of study and social studies. And what I would love for you to be able to do is to um, ask questions that would be for the greater good. This wouldn't be specific questions for about your own child, but if you have a question related to language arts or to social studies or to IMS in general, I will give you a link to this um, uh, board, which is a Padlet. And um, you could just ask me a question. Last year, someone asked about um, where could I find a list for recommended books for sixth graders? And so I was able to respond with an answer there. So after tonight, I will send, um, again, the class syllabus, if you didn't already get that, the success skills, which I sent earlier this week, um, and also a link to this Padlet and a link to our class website. So you have all that information. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Uh, I am just so excited to have your kids this year. I'm so pleased to be your partner in this sixth grade year in their life. It's a super monumental light, a year for them and for you. And I just can't um, say how um, pleased I am to be able to be part of it. If you have any questions, concerns, want to touch base with me about anything, the best way to get in touch with me is by email. And I promise to get back to you as soon as I can. All right. Thank you so much. I will see you soon. Bye.